Thank you for joining us. I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer, and today's topic will be a controversial one, and that is why hire an immigration lawyer? So Colin, why should one hire a lawyer? The, the short answer is that it's more complex than meets the eye. The longer answer is that in the Canadian immigration field, you have at the start two jurisdictions. You have the federal government that has uh, the right to legislate in the field of immigration. And you also have 10 provinces and three territories. With 13 different jurisdictions, you have laws that are being changed on a weekly basis. With so many different pathways to come to Canada and with these programs constantly being changed, it's fairly complex on how you work within all of these different programs. Obviously, uh, we're not working with all the programs at any given time, but it's important to have a profound understanding of how all of these programs work together and how they might impact a particular application. So having a legal trained uh, professional behind your application provides a wealth of benefits uh, that rely on the interpretations of all of these programs. There's case law that comes out on a regular basis that gives interpretation on how these programs are to be applied. So it's important if you're working with a professional uh, lawyer in a particular application, that individual will be, uh, in, in all things being considered, that person will be aware of how the courts interpret how these policies are applied, how government must give weight to certain evidence. There's also a lot of discretion in some of these applications, and it's important that a trained professional, typically a lawyer, uh, will have a facility to give weight to some of these interpretations and give weight to how discretion is going to be applied in your particular case, whether it's a skilled worker application, knowing which occupation to choose as your primary occupation, it's very important. Typically, an experienced lawyer will have the insight, having been trained, gone to conferences regularly, staying abreast of how the case law interprets these issues. It's very uh, important, and in many cases, uh, it's essential uh, that you work with a licensed lawyer in your application coming to Canada. So Colin, we know that there's lawyers, but there's also licensed immigration consultants. What's the difference? The short answer is really a question of how many years of training it takes to become a licensed professional. Lawyers typically have six to eight years of university education before they get called to a provincial law society. Of course, being a lawyer, every province regulates the practice of law. And so when it comes to becoming a lawyer, in, in it's typical that lawyers have, as I mentioned, six to eight years of university education. Following that, once they have completed their law degree, they have a year of practicum, which requires them to work in the office of a licensed lawyer for a period of six months to one year. So before someone can actually call themselves a lawyer, they have had to follow a period of supervision and learning important elements of what it takes to practice law. Unfortunately, in the professional licensing side of things, there's been a number of controversies. Uh, currently, the uh, professional licensing uh, regulatory uh, office is being changed in, in Ottawa. The new uh, regulatory board is, is being set forth. Uh, and there has been two previous attempts to license immigration consultants. Both of those regulatory bodies have been cancelled, terminated, and the uh, federal government has, has sought to uh, reinstitute a new licensing order. And that is taking place currently. And the reason for this is because there's been so much controversy uh, with policing and enforcing decisions that come out of the uh, immigration consultants regulatory body. Uh, previously, they were not able to enforce uh, various sanctions against licensed professionals. There are thousands of complaints against immigration consultants. And from our observation, one of the reasons is because the training that goes in to become a licensed professional is very, very short. 
typically individuals can, can take a one-year course. In some cases, it's, it's eight months course. Uh, and uh, to become a licensed immigration consultant, it's a license. Uh, the, the, the examination is a multiple choice exam. Uh, it's a very short process. It covers all the different disciplines, but it's all multiple choice questions. In, 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 historically, that's the way it's been. Uh, and what you, you don't have the same kind of training. Once they've passed the exam, there is no requirement to go and work uh, for a licensed professional body. So there is very, con the controversy exists in the volume of complaints that have been uh, filed, the uh, lack of training that goes on, and the, the enforcement of decisions that come out of the licensing board has been such that the federal government has uh, plans now to put in a new body. Uh, so quite simply, uh, there's no comparison between hiring a licensed immigration consultant, uh, which is uh, obviously uh, a very short period of time that one can, be, uh, can, can obtain a license, versus becoming a licensed lawyer. Now, in addition, a lawyer, there are important sanctions and requirements, and the standards of regulation are much, much higher for a lawyer. Uh, that's not to say there are there are not some uh, bad lawyers. I mean, of course, there are uh, bad professionals in every walk of life. You'll find uh, instances of uh, of, of uh, malfeasance with professionals, but by and large, the standard of care that is imposed on a lawyer and the requirements to manage a practice uh, are much much more rigorous, and the protections are far greater. Uh, when working with an immigration lawyer. Great. So does it matter where the lawyer is located? Interesting, in the Canadian immigration field, the federal government has, the, it occupies the most space. They take uh, most of the programs that one is going to apply under, it's going to involve the federal government. So the federal government is responsible to issue visas and conduct security and for the biggest programs coming to Canada, the Federal Express Entry System, it's obviously a, a federal program. So if you are an immigration lawyer, you can work in any federal uh, program. Um, if you are an, an immigration lawyer, you can typically work in any province that deals with immigration, except the province of Quebec. That is the only province that requires a professional to be licensed in the province of Quebec. So that means if you are looking to a file an application in Quebec, you would want to use a Quebec licensed lawyer, a notary, or you could use a Quebec immigration consultant. So uh, a consultant that's licensed on the federal side uh, would not be uh, permitted to submit an application in Quebec. So the long answer or the short answer is if you're working with a Quebec lawyer, you uh, would be well covered in any jurisdiction in Canada, including Quebec. And finally, can one apply without a lawyer? So the federal government, in particular, goes to great lengths to try to educate people and suggest that they don't need um, a professional in their application. And the, that is the truth. Uh, you do not, there is no requirement to hire a lawyer. Uh, practically speaking, the numbers are very, very compelling that applicants who are represented fare better uh, in outcomes of, of visa applications. So the federal government will readily uh, be able to show anyone uh, studies that have been done uh, where the application approval rates are higher when you're represented by a lawyer versus a consultant. Um, in addition, the Canadian government in its own writings in 1996, as far back as 1996, they wrote, it was the Canadian Embassy in Moscow in their guidelines uh, for representation, and in October 1996, the uh, visa office said that when lawyers and consultants present their clients' cases in a clear and concise manner, processing is expedited and simplified. That has been the reality uh, in our industry for many, many years. Um, so quite, quite candidly, of course one can apply without a lawyer, uh, but what would be, uh, re the, what we try to show in most candidates is we're able to apply under more than one jurisdiction. 
and knowing how you can use the immigration uh, process uh, in various jurisdictions simultaneously, that uh, is something that your typical candidate will not be aware of. It's also important to note that, for example, the Quebec government, when they're processing their applications, nearly 50 percent uh, do not qualify. So people submit applications thinking that they qualify when they don't. On the federal uh, side, uh, when you submit a profile for express entry, uh, a very large percentage of profiles submitted do not even qualify. Uh, so candidates are well encouraged, if you're very serious about uh, relocating to Canada, uh, a, a strong consideration, hire a good, experienced immigration lawyer. The statistics are there. Your chances are improved. Well, thank you very much, Colin, and thank you very much for joining us. If you want to read more on the topic, you can find it on our website. And if you want to find out if you qualify for Canadian immigration, please go to immigration.ca and complete our free online evaluation form. We'll then get back to you with your options. Your options. Uh, if, as always, please follow us on our social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And we'll keep you posted for the date of our next video. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us.